All right. So there is the agenda we all know and love. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it with the first thing on the agenda, the adoption of the agenda or motion one colloquially. <clears throat> whereas an agenda was made and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the council meeting of Monday, November 8th, 2021, as seen on the engineering website, moved by Andrew Happy De Silva, seconded by Nick, week nine, Neo Klaus. Do we have an opening? Okay, seeing no opening, I will put the motion up for debate. I'll check my speaker's queue. All right, seeing that we're at the end of the non-existent speaker's queue, do we have a closing? And with no closing, let's get right into it. So motion number one, whereas an agenda was made and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the council meeting of Monday, November 8th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Nick Neoklaus. If you are a voting member, there should be something coming up on your screen to vote momentarily. Please vote. If you're not a voting member, just don't press anything and the vote will eventually end. All right, motion passes. Perfect. Moving right along, that brings us right into motion number two. Whereas it's been some amount of time since the last council, and whereas Matthew wrote the minutes and they need to be approved, be it resolved that council approve the minutes of the council meeting of Monday, October 18th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew, no nickname to Silva, seconded by Nick, no minutes Neo Klaus. Do we have an opening, Director Silva? <laughs> All right, seeing no opening, I'll give everyone a minute if there's any debate on the motion. Check the speaker's queue. And once, going twice. Seeing no debate on the motion, do we have a closing? All right, whereas it's been some amount of time since the last council and whereas Matthew wrote the minutes and they need to be approved, be it resolved that council approve the minutes of the council meeting of Monday, October 18th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Nick Neoklaus. As soon as that poll opens, you may vote. All right, motion but passes. Very good. Following along the agenda, that brings us into speaker's business, which is my business. So I will quickly just say a few things if you'll indulge me, which I recognize you don't have much of a choice. Um, first and foremost, and always importantly, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that Queen's University is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. Um, and that we are grateful to be able to live and learn on this land. And as always, uh, I will encourage people to continue to educate themselves on um, the First Nations culture, First Nations culture in Kingston and surrounding area and all across Canada. Um, secondly, I do want to quickly say that it's uh, November right now, in case people were unaware of that. And so just for those who maybe don't know or aren't super privy, uh, November aims to increase early cancer detection, diagnosis, and effective treatments, and ultimately reduce the number of preventable deaths amongst men. Um, and it also works towards reducing stigma uh, around surrounding mental health um, for men, essentially. And so just a quick little shout out to the NSOC Movember team, who I know is hard at work right now, raising money to donate to the Movember charity. Oh my goodness. To the Movember charity. <laughs> um, and I just want to shout out everyone else as well for, you know, being engaged with the month, uh, taking the time to educate themselves and just you know being great people. So that one's there. And then, yes, th thank you, Aiden, for putting the link. Just a quick reminder uh, for personal pronouns, looks like most people have them in there already, but if you don't, um, just right click on your kind of profile, you'll see the option to rename and then just in brackets, um, whatever your preferred personal pronouns are. 
We already covered the asterisk in front of the name for voting members. Reminder to state your name and position when speaking, but this is all old hat at this point. And last but not least, there will be a couple of elected positions today. Um, and so just for myself, we'll probably keep the timing around the, the same 20 seconds. And so at 20 seconds, I'll, I'll, I will have to cut people off, but I will do my best to give ample warning when we're getting towards that. I might start doing like um, this confetti in the chat. So keep an eye out for confetti. And then that's when you know you're getting close. And that way I don't have to talk over you. Okay, good stuff. That was all I had for speakers business. Um, this is the part where we would get into presentations, but for anyone with a keen eye, you'll notice that there are no presentations this council, which means we can get right into new business. And remember those elections I was talking about? Going to be uh, elected positions, going to be very relevant. Motion number three. Whereas the rest of the external communications team needs to be elected, and whereas it's finally time to get this party going, be it resolved that council elect blank and blank according to bylaw section 9.b.2, moved by Aiden La Communication Shimizu, seconded by Christina Es Important Diesel. <laughs> uh, do we have an opening from either of the movers? <laughs> do. Thank you, Nick. Uh, hope everyone's having a great Monday. Um, oh, Director of External Relations in Shimizu. Um, so today we're gonna to be finalizing this committee that was started a long, long time ago, but that's all right. Um, so today we're going to be electing a few uh, honorary, our first years onto my external communications committee. So, uh, so far we have Nick, Haley and Kalina that are on it. And today we're gonna to finally finalize it. Um, so just a super quick um, overview of this committee again, just so everyone knows, because everyone should know what this is because it's important. Um, we examine how we should develop relationships with external bodies, uh, including other schools, and can also look into their policies to improve ours. Uh, we investigate if we should continue with our ESCO membership and look into changes we'd like to see from the CFES and compile, compile a verbal report for AGM. Um, so today we're going to be, I'm actually going to be nominating three first years, not two, um, but this there is no limit in policy for this committee so anyone who would also like to join is welcome to okay great uh with that opening um basically director shimizu if you want to elect uh, the three first years that's totally fine i guess for anyone else who wants to elect a first year or even self-nominate uh, we'll do it the same way we've done in the past so just throw your name in the in the speaker's queue and I'll call on you and then you can um, put out your nomination. Or um, if you want to self-nominate, we'll say you can also self-nominate in the in the chat, I think. Can I can I do it? Or do I have to do the speaker's queue thing? Uh, you can you can go for it. Okay. Uh Aiden Shim is the director of external relations. Um, just so you guys know the first years I'm nominating, um, after I say or after I say your names, you can just say I accept verbally or you can say it in the chat. Um, so for this position, I nominate Alice Stapleton, Becca Otsuki, and Michael Jones. Do I have to, can we second? Like, do we have to second them? If, uh, if someone wants to just second, um, I can second all three nominations. I think they're lovely. Yeah, I was going to say before when we did it, Julia nominated like all the first years once, and I think we just had a general seconder for that. So, um, so you second all of them? Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Like everyone accepted. I got my eye on the speaker's queue, but not seeing anyone putting their name in there. So if that is the case and there is no other nominations, we can get into the, um, to the question period. So just in kind of keeping things consistent, uh, similar to the previous election we ran for this committee, I'm thinking we'll do 
three questions. Uh, each of the candidates will have 20 seconds each. And then Director Shimizu, if you have the three questions you wanna ask, I'll, I'll put the ball over to you to be the one to ask them. Um, however, if, they're, if you only had like two prepped and you wanted to open it to the rest of council to, to ask a question, we can also do that. And then I would just have people um, put their name in the speaker's queue, but. Um, awesome, okay. <laughs> I got three preps, so. I'm you got three preps? Go. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, then, yeah, perfect, okay. How this will how this will work is we'll go with um, candidate Jones, you'll answer first. Um, candidate Ots Otsuki, you'll answer second. And candidate Stapleton, you'll answer third for this one. And then before each set of questions, I'll kind of readjust the order and then I'll make sure to let everyone know. Yeah. All right, go for it, Director Shimizu. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so my first question is, why do you want to join XCOMCOM? Uh, I think I'd like to join XCOMCOM just because it looks like um, a great opportunity to um, see what other engineering faculties are doing across Canada uh, and take some of those ideas that um, we can see in other uh, faculties and apply them to our own uh, and just to uh, stay connected within the engineering community um, and to build that community that we uh, we all know and love um, across Canada. Jones, uh, thank you, Canada Jones. Up next, Canada Otsuki. Um, I also feel the same way as Michael or Canada Jones, and I'd also like to say that I think it would be a great opportunity to be able to attend um, conferences. Um, and I also think that XCOMCOM is just a really great way to learn more about other engineering community or programs and try to better our own. So I think it would be a great opportunity. Thank you, candidate Atsuki. And then last but not least, candidate Stapleton. Um, I think it would be just a great opportunity to develop my communication skills and also just to get involved with the Queen's community itself. And I also think it's just super important to keep up to date with what other schools are doing and other engineering faculties, because that means that we can all improve our own schools. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you to all the candidates. Uh, for this next question, we'll go in reverse order. So. Candidate Stapleton, Candidate Otsuki, and Candidate Jones. Uh, floor is yours, Director Shimizu. Those are awesome answers. Um, so my next question is, what is important about communicating with other engineering societies? Um, well, it's super important to communicate with other engineering societies because um, we need to be able to, everyone's gonna have different ideas on different approaches for different issues. And so I think it's important to see what other people are doing because with collaboration you tend to be able to get the best idea possible because you can bounce ideas off of each other and see what other people are doing so that way we can improve our schools <laughs> thanks candidate stapleton um up next candidate otsuki um i feel the exact same way as candidate stapleton as in it would be a great idea to be able to come up with the best possible ideas to improve our own schools. I don't think that's an easy thing to do by yourself because you always end up coming up with the same ideas again and again, and it's just nice to get another perspective. Thank you. And candidate Jones. Yeah, I agree with both the other candidates. Uh, it's super uh, important to communicate um, because, especially because, um, we want to foster again, like I mentioned earlier, that com uh, that community that we all uh, enjoy. Um, throughout first year, I've already noticed that engineering really is a team sport. Um, we get the most done when we work together, um, and so um, yeah, the by communicating with other faculties, I think that we can really achieve great things. Great, thank you, candidates. Uh, for the last one, we'll start with Canada Otsuki, Canada Jones, and then Candidate Stapleton. Awesome. So my last question is, uh, when making requests and recommendations to higher bodies on the provincial or national level, we have to make sure we're, we're representing all Queen students. Uh, so I just want to ask how you will ensure that all voices of Queen students are heard. Um, in general, I think that it would just be a good idea to always keep an ear open and just ask for other people's opinions, maybe like send out emails once in a while with a poll asking for other people's opinions on what can be improved, what shouldn't be. And then um, 
as for speaking to higher ups, just always be respectful, make sure nothing obnoxious is being said. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, candidate Jones. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in past councils that I've been on, like in high school and stuff, I always found that it worked that like just um, kind of asking around and like if there's anything uh, big to be decided, just asking people, other people's like opinions uh, and just getting a candid response is the best way to um, make sure that everyone's voices are heard and you can bring that uh, into your work and into your decision making as well when you're recommending to a higher body. Anna Jones and candidate Stapleton. Uh, yeah, I agree with the other candidates as well. Um, I think it's important to listen out to your classmates like during lectures, outside of lectures. And also I feel like on social media too, it's, it's a powerful tool and you see um, people's opinions on different things. Um, so I think through all of those, you could definitely get a good idea of what needs improving. Thank you, candidates. Okay. Um, so I think that brings us to the end of the, the question period. And so uh, similar to with previous with the previous elections, we'll put the candidates in the uh, in a breakout room and then we can vote on on each of them essentially. I will leave it to Director De Silva to do that. Video. Okay, great. Um, so just to clarify, I believe Director Shimizu said that um, it's you can have any amount of people here. So I believe it'll be a vote of confidence for each of the candidates. Um, and I will, I'll give Director De Silva a minute to get the polls up, but essentially, um, I think, how, oh, you've got them already? Okay, perfect. Um, and with that being said, we can get right into them. So I think we'll start uh, in the same order we went through the candidates originally. So the first one is, do you have confidence um, in electing Michael Jones as a member of the External Communications Committee? Okay, that one passes. All right. Um, the next one is uh, Becca. So um, same as before, do you have confidence in electing Becca Otsuki as a member of the External Communications Committee? That one passes as well. And then last but not least, do you have confidence in electing Alice Stapleton as a member of the External Communications Committee? That one also passes. Thanks. Director Shimizu, you can finally get this party started. <laughs> um, all right. We can, can bring the candidates back in and we can get their names on there as well. And applause to all of the candidates. Um, I'll, I'll read through the motion and I'll give, um, actually, I'll turn the floor over to Director Shimizu if there is a closing at all. Uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out. And this can be one hell of a team. And I'm really excited to work with you guys. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's get into it then. Whereas the rest of the external communications committee needs to be elected. And whereas it's finally time to get this party going, be it resolved that council elect Alice Stapleton, Becca Otsuki, and Michael Jones, according to bylaw section 9.B.2, moved by Aiden Shimizu, seconded by Christina Bizzle. You may vote.
Mass. Motion passes. Right. Awesome. Moving right along into a motion number four, which is another election. Whereas bursary committee requires an odd number of members, and whereas the bursary committee currently has an even number, eight of members, be it resolved that council elect blank to the bursary committee. Moved by Maya Ian Mana, seconded by Jeevan Salvaraja. Do we have an opening from either of the movers? Yes, indeed. Um, good evening, Council. Jeevan Salvaraja, Director of Social Issues. Um, so, as following policy, we do require an odd number of members to be elected on the Bursary Committee, and we elected eight members many, many councils ago. Um, so today I will, I am sitting for my bursary chair to elect one more member who I believe is in the Zoom call today um onto the bursary committee to follow policy and have an odd number nine members on the committee um so that being said i guess um i will nominate the individual who would like to become a part of the committee um so i nominate alex galvin to join the bursary committee for 2022. member galvin is here if they want they can either respect, uh, accept, or respect. Oh, um, I accept. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, next, I just move straight into the questions. Um, e, e, I believe, unless I suppose, um, if we are bringing an election to council, we do need to let people have a chance. But I don't see any names in the speakers queue for other nominations, so I do believe we can move straight into the question period. Um, okay, yeah. Yep, seeing no other nominations, I believe we can we can get right into it, Director Salvaraja. Wonderful, um, okay, I have three questions prepared. Um, they're the exact same questions that were asked um, when the other members of the bursary committee were elected. Um, so Alex, the first question would be, why would you like to join the bursary committee? Um, I think that I would like to join the bursary committee because I think bursaries are a really important way of making NSOC and a whole bunch of Queen's engineering traditions more accessible to people who would otherwise not be able to do it. And I would like to be a part of that process to help all those individuals out. Wonderful. Um, second question, how would you manage personal biases when deciding on bursaries at committee meetings? Um, I think the best way to do that is to have a diverse committee to start with and to consult them whenever you believe a situation like that is coming up so that your own opinions are checked and so that you, your team can assure that you aren't missing anything that you should be seeing. Cool. Um, last question. Why is EDIIAS, so that stands for Equity, Diversity, Inclusivity, Indigenization, Accessibility and Sustainability, important to you? Um, it's important to me because I believe that most of the deficiencies in those areas are subject to roadblocks that affect different people in different ways. And I think that um, removing those roadblocks is an excellent goal for society to have. Wonderful. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Galvin. Uh, same as with the previous elections, we'll just have Kennedy Alvin wait in a breakout room or a waiting area for a moment, and we can proceed with the vote. Okay. Um, as candidate Galvin was the only candidate, this will also be a, a vote of confidence. Um, so I think the poll exists. Oh. One moment. Uh, sorry, I just checking the speakers quickly. It does look like there's no there's no debate or questions on the motion. So 
now we will get into the vote, apologies. Um, okay, uh, so yes, uh, without further ado, this is a vote, uh, ooh, words are hard. If you have confidence in electing Alex Galvin to the bursary committee, um, the poll should be open shortly, there we go. The vote passes. Okay. There we go. Congratulations, candidate. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, candidate Galvin. Um, Director Salvaraja, do we have a closing at all? Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for your patience, uh, Alex, in this process, and welcome to the bursary committee. Okay, wonderful. Um, with the closing, let's get at it. Whereas bursary committee requires an odd number of members, and whereas the bursary committee currently has an even number, eight of members, be it resolved that council elect Alex Galvin to the bursary committee, moved by Maya Ian Mana, seconded by Jeevan Salvaraja, you may vote. Motion passes. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. All right. Moving along to motion five. Whereas the Queen's University Experimental Sustainability Team, Quest, has not operated for the past year and a half, and whereas Quest should be deratified be it resolved that council approve the changes to bylaw 10.h in its second reading as seen in appendix, appendix quest bylaw moved by Jen and I don't even need your love. Uh, Kovinich seconded by Kaya, but you treat me like a stranger and it feels so rough. Uh, Niska Edwards, do we have an opening? Uh, yes, uh, Kaya Niska Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, unfortunately, Jen couldn't be here tonight. So um, for those of you who were here at council last time, we have not had contact with Quest in almost, I believe it's two years now. Um, so numerous attempts have been made within this year as well as this past year with Liam to get into contact with them. Um, we've never heard anything from them nor, their, nor information from their faculty advisor. Uh, so at the moment they are for all intents and purposes just not a team. They don't have any members. They don't have any um, anything going on. Um, so this is its second reading. So we are looking to de-ratify them. Oh, and I'm happy to take any questions if anyone thinks of anything. All right. Thank you for the opening. Uh, I'll now open the motion for debate. Seeing none or no names in the speaker's queue, do we have a closing at all? Sad days, but I guess if someone wants to um, revive the team later on, there's always that option. Okay, great. Well, let's get into it. Whereas the Queen's University Experimental Sustainability Team, Quest, has not operated for the past year and a half, and whereas Quest should be deratified be it resolved that council approve the changes to bylaw 10.h in its second reading as seen in appendix, appendix underscore quest underscore bylaw, moved by Jen Kovinich, seconded by Kaya Niska Edwards. You may now vote. Motion passes. Yes, Quest is just somebody we used to know. Moving on. Uh, motion number six, whereas council needs a deputy speaker and whereas council does not have a deputy speaker, be it resolved that council appoints blank as the deputy speaker according to bylaw 1.d.1.a, moved by Andrew, no, De Silva, seconded by Nick, name, Neoklaus. Do we have an opening? 
Uh, Andrew De Silva, Director of Governance. Yeah, so we do need a deputy speaker in case Nick cannot be present. So the deputy speaker um, acts as a replacement for Nick if he cannot attend council, and they also get Nick's vote for that council if there's an event of a tiebreaker. And also, sorry, it has to be a voting member. Um, that is another good point. So, yes. Thank you, Director De Silva. Uh, as with the previous elections, or I guess today's um, have kind of been different, but if you have a nominee, uh, just throw it, does it have to be a side two one? <laughs> um, they are in short supply. If you have someone you'd like to nominate, uh, just put your name in the speaker's queue and I can call on you. Or alternatively, if you would like to self-nominate, uh, feel free to do so. And then uh, the nominations nominations will need a seconder. Um, starting with Sci22, a uh, faculty board rep, Opler. Jonah Opler, Sci22 faculty board rep, I would like to because I don't want anybody to ever get confused about the name of the speaker. I'd like to nominate Nick Martin for deputy speaker. Seconded. Sure, I accept. All right. Uh, president Fizzle. Christina Fizzle, president. I nominate Jonah Oblick. Seconded. Seconded. Respectfully, I will decline. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. So many little, ah, uh, Saitu 2 President Takamoto. Julie Takamoto, Saitu 2 Prez. Uh, just for the jokes of it, I'm going to nominate all Saitu ones who are still here today. Seconded. Point of information, order. Um, what are the rules on who can and cannot be a speaker? Uh, direct response. Andrew Silva, so director of governance. Um, it can be anybody that has a vote in, that has a vote in council. Christina Vissel, Saitu One. Um, I respectfully decline. Um, on that note, then. I think vice, oh, never mind, the name was deleted. Okay, last. It was call. a different Kaya, Nick. Oh, apologies. N no. <laughs> the name was still, the name was still removed actually. So yeah, uh, it still stands, but. It, point of information, I yoke. There's, there's no other Kaya in here. Apologies, that was uh, my bad. Seeing, unless um, Psy22 faculty board rep Opler, is that just a residual name there? Yes, okay. Seeing no other names in the speaker's queue, um, I think we can get into the question period unless anyone would like to self-nominate. I'll give it one more second. Okay, um, wonderful. So we have candidate Merton. Did you have questions prepared, Director De Silva? Uh, De Silva, Director of Governance. Yes, I do. I have three. Okay, perfect. Um, candidate Merton will, since it's just since it's just you, uh, we'll we'll give you thirty seconds for for these ones because I believe that's what I um, had when I was elected for speaker way back when. So. That's good. All right. So the first question is, why would you be a good candidate for deputy speaker? Um, thank you. Um, I guess I really like the whole uh, sort of making sure everything runs smoothly. I tried to do a good job of that uh, in my other roles previously, helping with design teams currently, your exec and discipline exec. So um, I think I have enough experience to be able to apply that when needed at council. And I have a 
tiny amount of singing ability, maybe. Thanks to Como for the question in the chat. Awesome. Uh, next question. Um, what do you enjoy the most about council? I enjoy being able to see what is going on within the engineering society and being able to contribute my input um, uh, as a voting member uh, to like both in just uh, debate and discussion and by voting uh, to uh, really to make sure that we are best serving our members and the Queens engineering students uh, and to make sure that we do a good job in that and do a good job running our own affairs. Great. And then last one, um, are you comfortable with public speaking? Why or why not? Uh, I, I believe I am, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I can do a good job at that. I've run several meetings before um, and I, so I think I can do that just fine. Awesome, thank you. Great. All right, thank you, candidate Merton. Um, okay. Get some order in the chat. It looks like there was a request for singing, but I uh, probably won't do that one right now. <laughs> uh, with the question period out of uh, all wrapped up, <laughs> we'll send candidate Merton to a breakout room in a wait or a waiting area, uh, and then we can we can vote. Okay. Um, before we get into voting, I'll give everyone a minute if there is any discussion. Apologies for striking down the singing. There can only be one top dog and I was not ready for candidate Merton to take that position from me. All right, um, seeing no names in the speaker's queue, uh, this will be as candidate Merton is the only candidate running. This will be a vote of confidence. And so without further ado, um, do you have confidence uh, electing Nick Murden as the deputy speaker for council? Twitch three is abstain. Sorry. Motion passes. We are one step closer to a all Nick quartet. Right. Congratulations, uh, candidate Murden, on your newly elected role. Just before we get into it, do we have a closing at all? And just go to director of governance. Um, thank you so much for taking on the deputy speaker role. Appreciate it. All right, let's get at it. Whereas council needs a deputy speaker and whereas council does not have a deputy speaker, be it resolved that council appoints Nick Merton to the deputy speaker role according to bylaw 1.d.1.a, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Nick Neoklaus. You may vote. Motion passes. All right, nice. All right, moving on to motion number seven. Whereas the Engineering Society general elections are fast approaching, and whereas candidates should be subsidized for campaigning, be it resolved that council approves the subsidization of $70 for president, vice president candidates, and $50 for senator candidates according to bylaw 3.b.6.a, Moved by Andrew, prepare yourselves. De Silva, seconded by Kaya, elections are coming. Edwards, do we have an opening from either of the movers? Uh, Andrew, Andrew De Silva, Director of Governance. Um, this subsidization is given every year for candidates who are campaigning. It's often used to um, subsidize or subsidize for anything they use to um, promote their campaign and. On that note, we do have a we have a set of rules that we follow we follow very strictly, so they can't really use that subsidization for anything else. We make sure that it's used properly, and seventy dollars and fifty dollars is what 
was given last year and I believe the year before. So we're going to keep it to that. Awesome. All right. Uh, we'll now open the motion for debate. Seeing no names in the speaker's queue, I will give it another five seconds. All right. Uh, oh, uh, side 22 faculty board rep, Opler. Thank you, John Opler, side 22 faculty board rep. Um, I'd be interested to know if, if candidates on average of years past have used this full allocation or have gone over or have, you know, consistently been under um, because the faculty is so big and it's so hard to, you know, I, I'm just trying to think about ways that the money could be used. And I just can't think of many except for perhaps like promotion on some sort of social media, which isn't that expensive to go a long way. So I'm just wondering if in the past this full allocation has been used. Um, direct response. Kindness Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, I can say for this past year, I don't think any of us used any of that, mostly because I'm not good with tech and couldn't figure out how to do a Facebook ad, but also because we were doing all uh, social media campaigning. Um, so in normal years, that's usually allocated for people to get like posters and printed materials and be able to put that up around the ILC and other buildings on campus. Um, I don't know if we have record of how exactly how much they used. It's generally to be a buffer just in case everyone has access to that. Um, I don't, I can't think of anyone in the past few years having gone over or even been close to that amount. Um, yes. However, hopefully there'll be a component to in-person this year and that we will be able to use it more for posters and such. We're at the end of the speaker's queue right now. Okay. If there is no other debate on the motion, he says tentatively, keeping an eye on things. Do we have a closing from the movers? Okay. Um, seeing no closing, let's get into it. Whereas the Engineering Society general elections are fast approaching, and whereas candidates should be subsidized for campaigning, be it resolved that council approves the subsidization of $70 for president, vice president candidates, and $50 for senator candidates according to bylaw 3.b.6.a, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Kaya Edwards. You may now vote. And motion passes. All right. So that brings us to the end of new business and right into our executive reports. So without wasting a beat, we'll start with the executive report from the president. Christina Bissell, president. Uh, yeah, so quite a few things going on. Um, mainly, November has been sparking up, so I encourage you all to participate with that. I encourage you all to apply for a FREC committee. Uh, we still have applications open that close Wednesday for um, upper FC and first year's FC, so I hope to see all of you fly if you are coming back next year. SciFormal is also looking for a convener. We're looking really, we're really optimistic about what SciFormal this year will look like and hopefully we can have the next one hired and properly transition them to give Sci23 an amazing SciFormal as well. Um, Fix and Clean is also open and we will be taking registrants soon, although Aiden will definitely be covering that. Um, other some things as are, I've been helping the um, e ERB assemble um, their committee for hiring. And I met my FitGo Har Har Hamar, um, and he is amazing. So NH Pals will probably be getting an update sooner or later based on our project. And we will be hiring ScienceQuest uh, assistant director soon as well. 
I think that's all that's open for hiring, but I encourage you all to apply. It's always a fun time to get involved. Thank you. Thank you, President Bizzle, for the update and teaching us how to wet the dries and dry the wets and wet the dries. Important stuff. Uh, moving on to the Vice President of Operations report. Um, I do notice that the report opens with being open. Oh. Yeah, um, Kyanis Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, ben has not been feeling great. He's tried to kind of get back into it. Um, didn't go quite as well as he had planned. Most of what he's been doing is working for manager hiring for Science Quest, as well as helping e-transfers, month ends, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, lots of respect. Um, so most of what he's been doing is pretty much in the report. Um, if anyone has any specific questions of pertaining to things under his portfolio, uh, feel free to reach out to Christina or myself. Well, thank you for that. And thank you to vice president of operations for doing everything he's doing while being concussed. That's amazing. Um, Moving into the report from the Vice President of Student Affairs. Karina Skedwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, I'm really sad that we missed Spooky Council. That's my favorite one of the year. Um, so that's a bummer. However, there's always next year. So we have that to look forward to. Um, really big shout out to all the year, the year exec teams. Everyone came out this past week and weekend to paint their year crests. They are mostly done. Side two four just has to touch up theirs a little bit. So that's very, very exciting. Um, yeah, so it was really cold. Um, so thank you guys for showing up and helping out with that. And yeah, most of what I've been doing, um, setting up round tables. I've got a few more of those this month. I just had one last month with the discipline clubs as well as getting people to sign contracts. Another thing, I don't know if anyone heard, probably on the ED team, I accidentally ordered $2,000 worth of stanchions instead of 800. Um, so we successfully returned all that. So that was good. Um, helping my directors plan some events as well as um, a meeting with the Dean. So news from that is that all the accommodations and the vaccine stuff has been sorted out for students on the faculty's end. Um, yes, Christina was the one who actually drove it in the car. Uh, so thank you, Christina. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you to, for, uh, for printing out all of my labels. Uh, Stanchion, if you guys go to the movie theater and they have like those big metal poles with the rope in between them, um, they're outside the tea room right now, but I accidentally ordered way too many. Um, so that was fun. Um, and shock helmet. I don't know what's happening in the chat. All right, uh, last thing is my meme. I love the tea room so much. It happens everywhere I go. So I thought I would share some funny ways my name has been misspelled this week. Thank you, Vice President of Student Affairs, Kia. Uh, moving on to the director reports, starting with Director of Academics. Um, if, an, if an exec member is able to give a brief update for Director Hadley. Yes, Christina Bissell, director of, never mind, president, um, not events. Uh, yes, yeah, so Alexa has been very busy overseeing Engelings and helping them increase their, um, their marketing to get more tutors matches and first years attend their workshops. That she has also been working with their academic caucus coordinator and the upper year caucus is next week, I believe, and feedback surveys um, you can access them on the engineering website, like our engineer website, nsoft.queensu.ca, probably slash academics. And so everything is going smoothly in her portfolio. We're also expecting to have a bed fund um, booth set up in the upcoming weeks to get more ideas on what we can spend this, spend the money this year on. Thank you. Thank you, President Fizzle, and thank you, Director Hadley, for all your hard work. Uh, on to the Director of Communications. Uh, hi everyone. Um, so this council report is actually a little bit outdated, but 
uh, I'll share everything anyway. Um, so I met with my FIBCO Stephanie quite a few times now. Um, we mesh really, really well. I like her a lot. Um, and our first meeting was mostly just to get to know each other. But now I, uh, we started two new projects together. Um, so we're doing a discipline campaign for first years where we interview upper years and their experiences in their disciplines, and what the different disciplines are and things like that. Um, we're also doing a photo wall that we're hoping to put up in the ILC, um, mainly with pictures from the archives, um, specifically a week and maybe some holiday related pictures. Um, and I might also get those put up in residences if possible. Um, so my graphics team, we completed and posted all of our breast cancer awareness graphics. Um, and they've also been really busy doing outreach, Tea Room and Clark graphics in particular. Um, we're postponing our headshot event. Um, simply because we need faculty approvals and that's going to take a little bit of time so it doesn't make sense to do it right now um, and we'll also come up with the COVID-19 safety plan in the meantime. Um, other than that I've been doing a lot of my usual tasks helping my managers maintaining the Instagram uh, the all edge things like that um, and I also finally fixed the link uh, on our website from Dash to Breezy um, and we've also been doing some uh, advertising of Breezy so that people know that that's what we're using now um, and yeah what else happened i met with my team tonight um so i got a lot of good feedback on why uh, first and second year engagement might be a little bit low and like some ideas on how to market things a bit better my managers have been really really busy um and things that i'll be doing the next two weeks um so like i said we'll be putting up the photo wall uh, and hopefully getting that done sometime next week um it's pretty cheap to print photographs i'll be making some purchases with my fin finance officer uh, my video team um, will be doing a couple new videos. Um, they did a Remembrance Day video that will be getting posted this week. Um, and they're also looking at doing an Xmas video. Uh, and other than that, continuing with my usual tasks and looking at ways to boost engagement. So thank you. Thank you very much, Director McGurk. Uh, moving on to the Director of Clubs and Conferences. Um, Adam Fell, Director of Clubs and Conferences. Um, so I've been having regular meetings with all the clubs and conferences. Um, in these meetings, I've just been helping them plan their events uh, and go through um, and navigate reopening through the AMS application, helping them plan some taster events um, in the coming weeks. Um, I've also hired the new chair of the NSHOC EDII conference with the Director of Social Issues. Um, we've begun planning for the basic logistics of this event. Um, and in the next few weeks, um, we'll be uh, doing, I'll be doing much of the same work, um, and then we'll also be making sure um, that we hire the executives for the EDII conference. Those applications are up on Breezy, and I believe they close in about a week. So if you know anyone who wants to get, uh, be involved with that, um, definitely tell them to apply on Breezy. Um, I'll also be helping my FIBCO get started with their project uh, this week, and then also working on the sustainability report, which will be that, that project with the conferences officer and the FIBCO. Um, and then mostly just kind of, you know, answering questions about the reopening forms uh, and AMS event applications and, and things like that. Thank you very much, Director Fell. Uh, moving to the Director of Design. Uh, Kaya Nisk Edwards, Vice President, Student Affairs. Uh, unfortunately, Jen can't make it tonight. I have some updates to give on her behalf. Um, so uh, update for, I guess, any design teams in attendance, the Queen Solar design team is still working on clearing out their space. Um, and there's currently a design bay cleanup going on and a lot of trash in the main bay. Um, so Jen has been looking for volunteers from teams to help with that um, so that that space can be ready for teams to use and share. Um, she's working on ongoing, um, in terms of getting FOB access for members of teams, as well as the space allocation for the space that's gonna be freed up by Quest and by um, Queen Solar Design Team. That application is gonna be due November 14th. Um, Jen will be working with her FIPCO on a ratification package to provide to uh, affiliated groups or new groups who would like to be ratified as design teams, as well as, Oh, um, not exciting things, the space teams. So QRET, QSET, and Aero are teaming up with the Queen Space Conference uh, to do an online showcase to kind of encourage students to get involved in those different areas. 
And the last thing is working on getting uh, new updates for the bay and things to make that space more usable and more organized. Um, yeah, so I can also take any questions about stuff that's been going on in Jen's portfolio. Uh, so feel free to send her an email or send me an email. Awesome. Thank you, Vice President Edwards. Uh, and thank you, Director Kovanich. Moving on to the Director of Internal Processes. Evan Ray, Director of Internal Processes. Um, so for the past two weeks, um, I've basically been working on some projects with my automation team, um, just on behalf of them doing um, meeting with Jeevan and his bursary chair, Maya, to work on some bursary automation, um, then meeting with Aiden to hopefully do some automation um, with Fix and Clean. Whether that actually happens or not, we'll see, depending on some problems we had. Um, and then doing some poster sale planning, um, and then setting up my FIPCO with the projects for this semester and then projects for next semester. Um, and then updating the lounge COVID safety plan. And then sort of for the next two weeks, I will just be doing more event planning for the poster sale, Dean's reception, um, and then awards banquet. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Director Ray. And thank you for the meeting. Uh, moving to the Director of External Relations. Aiden Shimizu, Director of External Relations. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that amazing presentation from Evan, but I'll go through my updates um so for my uh events uh fix and clean is a go november 20th to 21st um definitely something that you should do if you're interested in helping out with the community um the outreach team is hired we had our first meeting last saturday uh right now we're planning on making an end stock santa claus parade float uh hoping to run thunder cans which is a food drive and we're working on the indigenous patch initiative with jeevan um, November started, so as Nick mentioned before, um, it's been going awesome so far. We ran a great ritual um, that got almost $400 from November, which is really great. And uh, we've got tons of other fun stuff planned for the rest of the month. Um, and for my external relations stuff, uh, I've just been, I've been hiring uh, uh, delegates for CDE, the Conference on Diversity and Engineering, and FYIC, the First Year Integration Conference. Uh, we're preparing delegate training for both of those things. Uh, we're working on getting uh, CELC, Conference on Engineering, or Canadian Engineering Leadership Conference um, delegates approved from the university. Um, we will be oh, electing XCOMCOM. I did that already today, so that's awesome. And I went to the ESCO October teleconference, which was boring. Uh, in the next two weeks, um, I for events, uh, finalizing fix and clean planning, getting volunteers. Again, if you're interested, sign up. Um, I'll be finalizing the outreach team events for the semester. Uh, November, we're hoping to have a spike ball tournament on the 21st. That isn't confirmed yet, still waiting on approval, but that'll be a cherry spike ball tournament. So again, if you're interested. Um, and we're also going to be hoping to do, we're hoping to do some ILC and ARC booths in the next couple of weeks. Uh, for external stuff, I'll be training the delegates, uh, creating a form for conference feedback, which actually was already done, um, getting XCOMCOM started and finalizing CELC planning. And that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Director Shimizu, for the report and the ray of sunshine. Moving on to the Director of Finance. Hi, uh, Mike Butler, Director of Finance. Most of what I've been doing uh, is kind of written out here. Some of the things that I would note is that finance training in the next part, that already happened. Uh, I was really glad to be able to like, run that. And my team and I are looking for ways to kind of have like more long-term improvements uh, on that sort of stuff. And yeah, assisting affiliated groups. I found like the new Slack has been really helpful uh, with just kind of speed up communications. I know I've personally been feeling very frustrated um, with kind of the delays that I know managing that comes with managing a lot of groups. So I found the Slack has just been a way faster way of interacting with anybody. So if groups are not part of that, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it is designed to be for the uh, money handling people. We kind of will be posting a lot of the announcements there. So I've really been enjoying that. As for over the next little week, mostly just like running bank of stock stuff um crushing through a couple of the month ends and looking forward for that and there's also a couple of permission issues that just need to be fixed so i will say that with putting attachments into e-transfers uh that's a big one that we've noticed hasn't really been working the way we want it to so we're kind of working to fix that but that's mainly what i have been doing and am going to be doing yes <laughs> 
Thank you very much, Director Butler, for the update, the song reco, and reminding us that Mariah Carey is defrosting as we speak. Um, moving on to the report from the Director of First Year. Hello, everyone. Alan Liu, Director of First Year. So basically what I've been doing over the last two weeks, a lot of stuff with FIPCO. Uh, you guys should have gotten uh, a check-in form from my team um, sometime today just to check in to see your, you've connected with your FIPCO and uh, if they're on track with their project. Um, we've planned a sort of a games a trivia night um, for the FIPCO uh, Thursday of this week. And we've also set up a, a Discord server. Um, over the uh, over the past, I mean, sorry, <laughs> uh, throughout last week, we did, we revealed the year crest for Psi25, which uh, big shout out to the year, ex your executives who did a great job painting this uh, year crest outside of Clark Hall. Um, we also, I met with my international advisor with QIC on strategies to improve engagement among international students. And we're looking to setting up a workshop amongst other things in the next few weeks. Uh, other things doing, I'll be doing in the next two weeks, we're uh, collaborating with WISE to set up a workshop with them. We're planning an EPT academic help session with uh, drop-ins uh, with Engelink's tutors throughout the month of November, uh, following up into the first week of December. And we're also working to set up some academic de-stress certs for the first years coming up to their um, exams, like a movie night or a trivia game night. Thank you very much, Director Liu, for the update and for the muffin. It was delicious. Um, moving on to the Director of Human Resources report. Hello. Um, sorry, I'm on my phone again. My laptop hates Zoom. Um, I swear I actually wrote a report, but I just like never sent it. I wrote it up on Thursday night when it was due and I just never got around to sending it in the email. I just forgot. So um, yeah, verbal report. Oh, sorry. Allison Wong, Director of Human Resources. Um, I'm a mess. Um, what I've been doing over the last two weeks is just usual breezy requests and approvals, uh, helping people out there and um, my big project I got started for this semester is getting the full training conference up and running. So for those of you who don't know, um, or for people, if it was unclear, the fall training conference is just general and stock training that everybody who has been hired from September until the training conference has to do. It's got a lot of awesome EDII content, uh, courtesy of Jeevan's team. Um, and I will be making training modules in a platform called RISE360. So for those of you who um, have done some training modules from the Human Rights and Equity Office, it's the same platform that they use. And it's super exciting to be creating content here instead of like PowerPoint because it's interactive and the user interface is really nice and the graphics are great. So hopefully it'll be more engaging and users will be able to get more out of that training and engaging with that content. Um, and I met with my FIPCO, so I will be getting them started with their project, hopefully by the end of this week. And then what I'll be doing over the next two weeks is just maintenance on those two main projects. So monitoring my FIPCO and finishing that training. And hopefully I will have that up and running for new hires by mid-November. So like week, late week 10, beginning of week 11, possibly. Um, yeah. Thanks, Council. Thank you very much, Director Wong. Moving into the Director of Governance's report. Andrew De Silva, Director of Governance. Uh, so the things I've been doing the past two weeks, uh, meeting regular, regularly with the general elections team, going over certain tasks that we have, and we had to prepare for the elections starting January. So we're trying to get a lot of things done now. Um, we're trying to find different ways to advertise the elections and get more candidates, as well as get more voting members. Um, and we are starting to plan events and plan the request forms. That will be for events in January and February. And also I've been doing like the usual, so organizing councils so and a newsletter, things like that. And things I'll be doing the next two weeks is continue to meet with the, the elections team, actually finalize the general election rules and bring it to next council. And then continue to do the regular things of the dog. Thank you very much, Director De Silva. Thank you for the meta meme. 
Moving into the Director of Information Technologies report. Evan Ray, Director of Internal Processes. Uh, Zach couldn't make it to council tonight, but I can give his report on his behalf. Um, so the majority of Zach's work has been working on the migration, um, but I know he's also been working on looking at secure long-term data storage, um, as well as taking some of the internal tools that he's already developed this year and adapting them for different purposes um, for the rest of our portfolios for different tasks. Um, and then the next two weeks, it's going to be the majority of his time. It's obviously going to be the migration and then answering his tickets. I think he's getting roughly 30 a week right now. Awesome. Thank you very much, Director Ray. And thank you very much, Director Donovan. Um, that kind of looks like Nick Jonas, but that's that's besides the point. Uh, moving on to the report from the Director of Social Issues. <laughs> Hello, hello. Happy November, everyone. Jeevan Zavaraja, Director of Social Issues. Um, so over the last two weeks, I've had quite a few meetings with Exec, ED, Equity Team, um, Sustainability, Committee, Sustainability Committee, Equity Team, I said that already, uh, and the Bursary Committee. Um, aside from that, um, I had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with the Director of Professional Development, Marissa, to talk about um, the creation of EDI in the workplace training. Um, I've had quite a few meetings with the EDI Conference Co-Chair to talk about um, preliminary planning um conference committee hiring so we are hiring a committee um, to help plan the conference applications are live on breezy i believe they close um this friday so if you know anyone who's interested um let them know and apply um aside from that we will be meeting sometime in the very near future to also talk about venue space bookings and creating basic framework on how we want the conference to run um, again that conference will likely be run um, in february or may um, aside from that i've been doing quite a bit of bursary automation with evan um, in terms of just automating the bursary process and making, making it more efficient. Um, I helped my, ED, my equity team, um, International Student Rep, launch an International Student Feedback Survey, which is currently live and will be open for the next two weeks. Um, that's just in our, we're hoping out of that survey, we get a lot of feedback from international students um, who are part of the Engineering Society on ways we can improve international student support for NSOC. Um, I've had meetings with HR to talk about EDI training for the fall conference. Um, that's already been discussed. Um, in terms of the orientation week EDI survey, Report one, um, which has the raw data from the survey put into a document has been created and sent off to board already. I will be meeting um, or I'll be joining um, this week's board meeting um, on Thursday to present the information received from um, the survey based on orientation week and how it ran this year. Um, so that will be happening sometime this week. And um, I will be meeting with FC22 in the near future to pass along that information that's developed in the second report. Um, I've also been working with Aiden to um with the indigenous support awareness patches um we've been getting some progress with the etlt team on edi project collaboration specifically on the edi master resource document um ACES student affairs reached out to us recently and asked us to help um collaborate and pass along a survey that they're running um that get, gauges feedback on edii um that's something that i've been circulating um and is open to everyone um, i'll put in the survey link into the chat once i'm done with my report um, December 6th is coming along well. There's been a lot of planning recently. We're focusing on getting the CAC form submitted um, and also getting the invite list and keeping um, Pete Deluzio in the loop so that he's aware of everything that we are doing in terms of planning for the event. Um, so yeah, that's everything that's happened over the last two weeks. Over the next two weeks, um, more meetings with a lot of different people. Um, we're in the process of restocking the ILC washrooms, um, but we're getting through more baskets for the men's washrooms. Um, EDI conference comment committee hiring and marketing. That's something that'll happen this week. We'll be doing interviews this week once applications close. Um, o week EDI survey work, again, presenting the board and then creation of report two and collaborating with board on that. Um, I managed to get in contact with my FIPCO, which is very exciting. Um, so I'll be meeting with um, him sometime this week um, to talk about just general FIPCO stuff. Um, again, re reaching out and still trying to keep communication with um, the Office of Indigenous Initiatives to talk more more about the Indigenous Support Awareness Patches, um, helping prepare fall training conference EDI content. Um, I'll be attending the Conference on Diversity and Engineering for the next few weeks. Um, again, working on bursary automation, and then we're gonna be looking into making some policy changes on bursaries in the near future as well, and a lot more December 6 planning. Um, but yeah, so that's everything that I have been doing. Thank you very much, Director Salvaraja. And is that Aiden Sashimi I see? You there? there you go. That is it. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, awesome. Moving into the report from the Director of Professional Development. Mm -hmm. 
looks like Director Matthews isn't in the chat. I don't know if an executive is able to. Christina Bissell, President Marissa told me like a week ago about this, so my apologies there. Um, yes, Marissa has been very hard at work developing a lot of workshops for everyone, and she is working to have a job fair soon. So keep an eye open for that. Otherwise, things are pretty much running as usual, and they're hoping to have the summit in January in person, which is really exciting. And she also met her FIPCO, who I forgot the name of, but yay, FIPCOs. Thank you very much, President Bizzle, and thank you, Director Matthews. And hey, last... everyone. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> I thunder. That's all right. <laughs> Um, my Wi Fi is being a little weird, but yeah, I'm Delina Vo, Director of Services. Um, so it's been super exciting for the services these past couple of weeks. A lot of collaborative activity um, between the tea room and Clark, for example, at the Acro Ski Ritual, which went super, super well. The cider is delicious, especially with Fireball. Love to see it. Um, and the last outdoor ritual was this past Friday. So we are working on safety plans again as well as for the Clark Lounge. And the tea room has soup now, so I haven't had the chance to try it yet, but I hear some pretty good reviews from everybody. So I hope that's on your bucket list too. Um, there's also been Movember collabs between the tea room and between Clark and the Movember committee, which have been super exciting. So thank you to everybody who's been supporting that. And we actually hired the head director this past weekend. So that should be coming out soon, very exciting. And the assistant director positions are also out for Science Quest. So hopefully, You'll apply if you're interested. Um, I've been following up on staff trainings these past couple of weeks, as well as coordinating feedback surveys with my services officer and coordinating bathroom repairs for the Clark Lounge because if you've been in there recently, it is very scary. It is spooky indeed. <laughs> Um, so over the next two weeks, again, safety plans, I'm going to be helping my new head director transition. I'm going to look more into Clark renovations, hopefully. Um, weekly statics as always and hopefully I'll be able to coordinate an all head manager meeting with my head managers do some personality tests hang out have a good time thank you very much director Vo um, and thank you for the meme ominous all right that brings us to the end of the director reports uh, and into the question period so I will give it a second and look at the speaker's queue Old McDonald had a fun head. Okay, seeing no names in the speaker's queue, um, we can carry on with the agenda, which brings us to the faculty board report. Um, we have not had faculty board yet. It is this week. Kind words, um, Vice President's duty praise. Okie dokie, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings us to the Alma Matter Society report. Uh, Kai Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. We did have AMS assembly. Um, I'll just kind of touch on the major points. Um, so National Truth and Reconciliation Day, the Senate will be considering whether or not they're going to make it a holiday. Um, that is what a lot of student and staff have been pushing for and what they would like. It would be effective 2022, 2023, uh, based on that discussion at Senate. Um, there was two big uh, kind of presentations. The first one was on financial accessibility. So recommendations included um, budgeting advice, resources, and mental health support, as well as um, more stronger work study programs and reducing the costs of textbooks and mandatory academic supplies, um, as well as making scholarships more accessible and more available to students at Queens. And then the next presentation we had was on um, BIPOC student experience. Uh, so it was a focus group and then a follow-up talking about the experiences of students um, within the community, as well as classroom experience, culture, and the equity resources. So the main recommendations coming from that discussion was more equity training for students, faculty, and staff, uh, as well as having diverse curriculums and syllabi and more organizational accountability. Um, so knowledge for 
rules and the consequences of not following said rules, as well as creating a centralized bank of information and resources and giving students um, doing equity work credit and compensation. So student-based awards, bursaries and grants to really encourage um, that learning outside of the classroom and make sure that people are aware of these issues and are seeking uh, more information about them. So on to the executive reports from the AMS executive. Um, one of the big things that President uh, Kasim talked about was HOCO harm reduction. So there was a large amount of police presence, um, an unprecedented amount in at the second homecoming weekend. Uh, the AMS has released several petitions in terms of wanting that money sent uh, elsewhere and not allocated towards policing. Um, so more information about that is available on their social media accounts if anyone is interested. Um, also, we still don't have a rector, which is like not great because we definitely should have one at this point. Uh, so the candidate stepped down before voting could be completed. Um, and the Board of Trustees for the university has been very resistant towards student representation. However, the AMS um, insists that they will keep discussing this matter. The last major thing that I'm sure we've uh, mentioned already is the AMS um, fee increase. So they passed at assembly a referendum that went out. You should have all gotten an email that says, do you agree to the increase in AMS student fee from $62.11 to $78? Um, this motion did not pass, uh, so this has failed and they will not be increasing their fee. Um, yeah, so at AMS, we talked about, um, we, as the engineering society, asked questions about what that fee was for. Um, the answers were not terribly um, specific or adequate in our opinion. Um, however, it did pass anyways, and it did go to a student vote in which the students have said no. Um, so we will keep people updated on what happens with that and whether or not the AMS is going to uh, apply for another referendum or kind of where the next, next steps are from there. So if anyone has any questions related to that, um, please reach out to me. And that is all for now. I am terribly sorry. It was a long meeting. So hopefully uh, that was remotely interesting. Thank you very much, Vice President Edwards. Uh, moving on to the Senate report. Christina Bissell, President, I believe Senate is meeting either this week or next week, and the fall term break task force has submitted their proposal on when they, or the student body actually, and the rest of the university committee believe the fall term break should happen. The proposal consisted that the fall term break um, be attached to Thanksgiving for the entirety of those four days, and thus the first day of classes would start on the Tuesday after um, Labor Day. More details pertaining to Senate are without my or outside my purview. So thank you. Thank you, President Bissell. Uh, yeah, there was also like talk about um some of the other name and, were, name and position like, discussed earlier, like the holiday and stuff, but not not much has happened. But a lot of the motions that are about to pass are gonna like they're all gonna happen in the next Senate meeting. So. Okay, uh, great, perfect. Moving on to the Engineering Review Board report and just a reminder uh, for name and position if you're speaking. Christina Bissell, President. Um, we are currently trying to assemble a hiring panel. However, that consists of the rector, which no, which isn't, which doesn't exist right now, as Kai has mentioned earlier. 
So we are trying to find an alternative. Thank you. However, ERB is still taking um, submissions. Thank you. Thank you, President Bessel. And that brings us to the advisory board report. Deputy Chair of the advisory board, Mike Butler, I've been sent a little update on my phone for what to read for this report. So I'll go through that quickly. Um, on advisory board, we recently had our end of year presentations from Science Quest and Orientation Week. Um, we're looking forward to mid-year presentations. So, so those are beginning in the next few weeks. And we're kind of making a couple of small changes to how the presentations are done just to make them more uh, useful to the services. And this week we're looking over the EDII plan for the year and also reviewing the OECDAI survey. So that's all for the advice for. Thank you very much, Deputy Chair Butler. That brings us to the club reports, starting with Apple, after which we will say nerds. Apple. Apple. Nerds. Hi everyone, Inch in Missouri, Director of External Relations, filling in for President of Apple, Matt. Um, I also have words on my phone to say. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of meetings with the faculty concerning a, a certain course called Complex Analysis that has had a under a very bad uh, teaching issues um, so working that out, uh, first round of merch sales are happening next week. Uh, they found old merch and patches from two years ago to the department. Uh, and they're planning a second round of merch sales where people won't be, people who missed the first time will be able to buy again. Uh, they're planning exam review sessions for second and third year courses uh, for MTHE students. And exec team is looking into bed fund ideas. Uh, departments currently looking at using it for textbooks, but we would like to come up with other ideas and if other uh, exec teams have ideas that were successful in the past, let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the report from Cam and Cam, after which we will say fumes. Cam and Cam. Fumes. 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 Um, Kennedy Neichenbauer, Chem and Chem Engineering Society representative. Um, so for our update, it is that our treasurer and president received finance training and will be submitting a budget plan to the Engineering Society in the near future. We sent out an academic feedback survey and received lots of great feedback that was forwarded to the head of the chemical engineering department. And finally, the president and I are working on Chem Bonds, which is a mentorship program for chemical engineering and engineering chemistry students. Thank you very much. Um, next, we will get the report from geological engineering, after which we will say dirt. Geological. Dirt. 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 Cool. Um, I forget what my title is. Maria Lina Point, uh, brain fart, geological engineering representative. Anyways. Uh, we've completed our first merch order successfully, um, and we're looking into a couple things to set up for our spring merch order as well, as well as setting up events in general for second semester because we've been having issues staying on top of things. Um, we, myself and our treasurer have had finance training as well over the weekend, and that was great. And we're in the midst of planning our Christmas event to replace the garage. And we have something in the works. So we're very excited about that. Um, and finally, just gathering bed fund ideas still to get some proposals going. Thank you very much, Gio. That brings us to our final club report, which is coming from Civil, after which we will all say beans. Um, hi, I'm Katie Fitzpatrick, um, and I'm the NGSOC rep for the Civil Society. Um, so right now we've currently just been working on merch. We sent out a vote for everyone to fill out. So we just are gathering all those tallies right now. Um, and there's been talk about a mentorship program for first or second year students who are interested in civil or just have any questions about it in general. And yeah. Thank you very much. 
All right, with the club reports completed, that brings us to the year reports. Um, starting with Sai Chugga 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 Two Two. Sai Sai Two Two. Rosh. Julia Takamoto, Sai Two Two Prez, also Jax Takamoto, uh, the best boy ever. Uh, so in the last few days, we finally got our year crest painted. Big shout out to all the effort uh, Kaya, Evan, and Salma put into it. Um, really great that even though the whole team couldn't be there, like they still got it done. Um, so really happy with that. Fun fact, ours is one of the only crests with more than three colors in it. Go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, our Psy22 face masks are up on the Enstock store now. So if you go to the Enstock shop tab, you can purchase a face mask. There is free shipping if you are anywhere in Kingston. And if you live near enough to me in the GTA, I will also drop it off for you. Um, we finally have a yearbook rep. This is the best news ever. Uh, I unfortunately did not submit the motion in time for it to make this council, but it will come to the next council just to make it official. And it is Nick Neoclus. He decided to take pity on <laughs> all the sad side tutus um, and will help make our yearbook. And we have a trivia event coming up this weekend. It is Sunday at 7 p.m. Uh, it is a very awesome Kahoot. There will be prizes, multiple prizes, stickers, small cups, who knows what else. Um, and I am told that is quote unquote, will test your essential knowledge. Like who is that Pokemon? Um, <laughs> there will be, or there is a Facebook event that is up now. Um, and there is details in the Facebook event as well as on our Insta. So if you want to find out more, register for the event, you can do that there. And that is everything. Thank you very much, Sides 2 President Takamoto and Jax Takamoto for that update. Um, moving to the report from Sai. Moving to the report from Sai. Nobody likes you when you're 23. Hi. Uh, so can you hear me? Two, three. Rock. On. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, sick. Um, yeah, Rain Teasler, uh, Psy23 Vice President. Uh, Noah can't be here tonight because uh, she's feeling under the weather, but I'm here to take a place. Listen, listen, I know I messed up, okay? <laughs> um, this is my first time giving a report like this. That's not other things. Um, so what we've done in the past couple weeks is uh, we've painted our year crest as all the other uh, year exec have. Um, and other than that, we've had a little bit of a slow start to the year. We're still working on uh, merch ideas. And uh, I think we're currently trying to get approval for a couple of events that we want to run before the end of this semester. Um, and yeah, we're also working on getting an actual website because uh, we don't have one still. And um, yeah, also working on changing hands with the meme page. Uh, because currently it's not under control of uh, the the year, Psy23 year exec. And I've been in talks with the person who currently has it, but they have forgotten the password. So we're <laughs> still in talks and trying to get that figured out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it from here. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Psy23 Vice President Teasler. Moving on to the report from Psy24 Ever Frosh. Uh, played for President Ali Preet. Frosh. So what we've been working on recently is we are planning on ordering some merchandise this week, consisting of some stickers, a hoodie, and uh, small cups. And our treasurer finally received finance training, so that's uh, the start plus for that. Uh, we're figuring out a way to safely sell this stuff once the order arrives. And we have started on our year crest. We're almost done. Uh, the uh, artist did such a great job, though, taking longer than expected due to some 3D details. 
that will make it hard to finish. Uh, so that's been the last few weeks. Thanks. Thank you very much, Sai24, President Paquit. Uh, that brings us to the report from Sai25. Uh, Sai25 President Sabrina Button. Uh, Rosh. Uh, Rosh. <laughs> so Rosh. we <laughs> painted our year crest like all the other years did, and it was really fun. Uh, we got a good turnout. Uh, since the last council, we hosted our first event, which was a Geo Kahoot, and it went really, really well. A quarter of the year showed up, which was really surprising um, online. Uh, but yeah, and uh, myself and my treasurer got finance training, which is really exciting because now we can uh, start our merch. And yeah, other than that, we're planning to get merch out hopefully in the next few weeks. And we are doing a little scavenger hunt event soon and promoting Jacket Council. And that's about it. Thank you very much, Side 2 Five President Button. That brings us to the end of the year reports. And into, yes, true, I should have been on that, but it's important to say your year before you introduce yourself and start your report. Um, next council, I will, I will make that clear before starting. Um, on that note, though, oh. Oh, no, there's nothing to be scared about. <laughs> um, that brings us to statements and questions by members, which is the last item on the agenda. So I will pull my peepers over to the statements and question by members speakers queue, which is looking pretty barren, but I'll give everyone a second. Maybe two. Okay, that was more than two. Um, <laughs> seeing no statements or questions from members, there is only one thing left to do. We do need a motion to... Uh... Motion to close council. Seconded. Oh, okay. Yeah, Seconded. sure. Fourth. Um, motion to close council has been has been brought up. I think, uh, I think we can handle that. Director De Silva. Yeah. Yeah, that passes. Here we go. Good work, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank You're you. all free to go now. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Take care of yourselves. It's week nine. Sunset was at 436.